How do I know there's hell and heaven? How will a common man believe? I don't believe in a religion. Brother, what is the definition of religion? Religion is a way of life. How you lead your life? Many people say that I don't mind. I'm just a human being. I'm born. I will do test and error and I will know how to lead a life. For example, you go to a forest. You are going to a forest the first time. You don't know whether the fruits are poisonous or not. If you start eating any fruit, you may end up eating a fruit which is poisonous and you may die. What do you do? You ask an expert. Right or wrong? When you get sick, who do you go to, brother? When you are sick, who do you go to? Why? The doctor is an expert in treating sickness, correct? You can't say, I am a human being. I will treat myself. No. That's what the Quran says in Surah Nahal. The Quran says in Surah Nahal chapter 16 verse 43 and Surah Ambiya chapter 21 verse number 7, Fas alu ahal zikri in kuntu la talamun. If you don't know, ask the person who is expert. Similarly to lead a life, we have to ask the expert. Now who is the expert? Who is the expert? The person who created us. Who created us? It's Almighty God. So, we have to follow the commandment of Almighty God. If you do not believe in Almighty God, you should listen to my video cassette, Is the Quran God's Word? Where I have proved logically and scientifically the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are an atheist, are you an atheist brother? Are you an atheist? Pardon me? Are you an atheist? No, no. Not an atheist. So what do you? Do you believe in God? Actually, I believe in the power. But... Fine. That means you believe in God. You I want to call it power, you want to call it supernatural, you believe in God. It's like, I believe something. Something. You don't is... know the name. That name is God. <laughs> you may call it power, you may call it anything. If you don't believe in God, then you listen to my video cassette, is the Quran God's word. If you don't know who that power is, yet you listen to my cassette, is the Quran God's word, where I've proven scientifically, undoubtedly, existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the Quran is the word of Almighty God. Now coming to your question, if you say about power, that means you believe in a religion. Because religion by definition, according to Oxford Dictionary, religion means a belief in a supernatural controlling power. Power word is there. That means you believe in a religion. Religion, according to Oxford Dictionary, means a belief in a supernatural controlling power, a personal God or gods that deserve obedience and worship. That means you believe in religion, you don't know the definition of religion. So don't say I don't believe in religion. Religion is English word, brother. Religion is English word. If you open the Oxford Dictionary, it says religion means a belief in a superhuman controlling power and you believe in a power. Or a personal God or God that is a worship or obedience. To know more about that power, you see my video because it is the Quran God's word. Now coming to your question, basic question, how will I prove that there is hell and heaven? Now, if you hear my video because I have proved many scientific aspects in the Quran, if you use science to the Quran, what we come to know that whatever the Quran has said today, 80% can be proved to be 100% correct scientifically. Quran speaks about various scientific facts, which we came to know recently. It speaks about astronomy, it speaks about the spherical nature of the earth, it speaks about the Big Bang, it speaks about the light of the moon, it's not its own light, reflected light, it speaks about the water cycle, it speaks about biology, it speaks about botany, it speaks about zoology, it speaks about embryology, all these things. Now, today is the age of science and technology. If we put this test of science to the Quran, what we come to know, 80% whatever the Quran has said is 100% perfectly correct. The balance 20% is ambiguous, neither right, neither wrong. Out of the 20%, not even 0.01% has been proved to be wrong by scientific fact. It is ambiguous. So what my logic says, when 80% is 100% correct and not even 0.01% out of the 20% is proved wrong, so my logic says that inshallah, even that 20% will be correct. It's a logical belief. I being a medical doctor, Quran, speak of astronomy, embryology, genetics, everything perfect. Then you ask me, brother, you being a doctor, you believe in hell? You believe in heaven? You believe in jinn? You believe in life after death? So my logic says, inshallah, even the other 20% in the Quran, which science hasn't reached up to that level. 
Science cannot prove it. Maybe science will prove 50 years later or 10 years later. But today science hasn't reached that level. So in this way, I believe whatever 20% which science hasn't proved to be right or wrong, inshallah even that will be right. This is one way to prove about hell and heaven. There's another way, simple way, without reading Quran. Brother, I am asking a simple question. Is robbing good or bad? Robbing is good or bad? Robbing is bad. Bad. Yeah. Raping a girl is good or bad? No, 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 bad. Bad. Okay, now, I am asking you a question. Logically, I suppose happen to be the biggest mafia. Hypothetically. I am a big robber. You prove to me logically and scientifically. I am a very logical person. I am a scientific person. I am a logical person and scientific person. You prove to me why robbing is bad for me and I will stop robbing. Only one reason you give me, one good reason why robbing is bad for me and I will stop robbing. It hurts others. It hurts people. It hurts others. What difference does it make to me? If it hurts, if I rob, if I rob a thousand real, it is benefiting me. I can see movie. I can go to a five-star hotel. What difference does it make whether it hurts others? Does it hurt me? I told you, prove to me why it is bad for me, not for others. I am least bothered about the others. Why is it bad for me? When I'm robbing thousand, if it hurts him, no problem. What difference does it make to me? If it hurts somebody else, does it make a difference to me? I can enjoy, I can see movie. I can eat chicken biryani. I asked you, give me one logical reason why it is bad for me, not why it is bad for others. I'm a big mafia. I'm powerful. I'm a scientific person, logical person. Prove to me one good reason, logical, why robbing is bad, I will stop robbing. Come on, another try, brother. Another try. One more try. Why it is bad? No answer. No answer. Try, try. There are 20, 30 reasons, 100 reasons you can give. You know, actually, as you said, the religion means the way of life. Not religion. Why robbing is bad? Tell me. Don't go to religion. No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming to the point. No, not point. First tell me why robbing is bad. We'll come back to your point afterwards. I'll come to your point afterwards. When that yes. is the way of life. Not way of life. Tell me why robbing is bad according to you. Why it is bad for me, I will stop robbing. Up to me, you know, it hurts others. So, but you know. what difference does it make to me when it hurts others? Does it hurt me? Of course, you know. Why once... it is bad for me, not why it is bad for others. Once we come to the society, you know, we have to face, face them. Okay, once we come to society, you have to face them. I'm facing them. I'm facing them. What's what? Why it is bad for me? The society won't respect us. What difference does it make whether respect or not? I can eat chicken biryani. I can go and see a movie. I can go to a five-star hotel. What difference does it make to me if society respects or not? Imagine someone respects society. The poor person doesn't have food to eat. He'll be happy? No. You require food to eat or not? You require food to survive? Only society respect in the person is starving to death. You know, in India, thousands of people are starving to death. What difference does it make? I must give me one good reason why robbing is bad. I stop robbing. Why it is bad for me? Can anyone else help him out? Why robbing is bad? Why robbing is bad? There are various answers. I'll help you out. You may say, Police will catch you. Good logical reason. Police will come and catch you. Correct, right or wrong? Correct. Ah, but you didn't give the I'm helping you out. <laughs> but brother, I told you I'm a powerful mafia. The police is in my pocket. Ministers are in my pocket. Big mafia. See, all the top mafia, the police is in the pocket. They are on my payroll. The police is on my payroll. What will they catch me? Small robber like you should not rob. You will get arrested. I'm a top mafia. The police is on my payroll, even the ministers are on my payroll, they are in my pocket. So small robber like you should not rob, big mafia like me can rob. Another reason, I'll help you out. Maybe somebody will come and rob you. Yes. No one can rob me because I've got 100 bodyguards. All of them hiding behind the stage. Bodyguards. Small robber robs, somebody will rob him. No one can rob me because I've got bodyguards. Hundreds of bodyguards with AK-47. So logically, you cannot prove at all why robbing is bad. With all your science and technology, you cannot prove robbing is bad. So shall I take it in that way, you know, it is to make people fear that, you know, if you do the wrong things, then when you die. What wrong thing? Where is robbing wrong? First you prove it is wrong, nah. 
Where is robbing wrong? You haven't proved to me robbing is wrong. When you prove robbing is wrong, then you can say don't do wrong thing. Nah? Therefore, what is good, what is right, you require a creator to tell you. You require a doctor to tell you what food is good, what food is bad. This fruit is poisonous, this is healthy for you. Apple is healthy for you, wild berries are poisonous for you. A doctor tells you. There's no better doctor than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Logically speaking, logically speaking, brother, that mafia has got bodyguards. No one can harm him. And believe me, there are many examples. He dies a very comfortable death. But I'm asking a simple question now, brother. Don't you think that there should be justice? Brother? Yes. Justice. Someone should punish him or not? Law is there. But the law cannot punish every human being here. Why? There are many mafias in Italy. There are many underworld people in India. And the law can't do anything to them. The law is in their pocket. But yet, you as a common man, don't you think you should be punished? Raping is good or bad? There are many people who rape. They rape the girls. No, nothing. The law cannot catch them. So don't you think he should be punished? Yes or no? Yes. But there are many people you see in this world who are big mafia, they die comfortable, they are rich, they are millionaires. There should be some justice. The reply is given by Creator. Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 85. Allah says, Kullu nafsin maut. Every soul shall have a taste of death. But the final recompense will be on the day of judgment. This life is the mere chattels of deception. If there is no life after death, this life is of injustice. What we say that the total justice would be on the day of judgment. Our great almighty God will give justice. I tell the person, fine, you may be a big robber. For example, you are that mafia, now I am a Muslim. No one can harm you. Police is in your pocket. And then I ask you, justice is required, yes. If someone robs you, no one can rob you, agree. But don't you feel there should be justice? There are many robbers, there are many evils, there are many criminals who go scot-free. Unless there is life after death. You cannot prove robbing is bad. You cannot prove raping is bad. Unless there is life after death, no humanity, no book on humanity. No Mother Teresa, no Mahatma Gandhi can prove robbing is bad without the concept of life after death. Because, I am asking you a question. Hitler. History tells us Hitler insinuated 6 million Jews. How many Jews? 6 million. 6 million. Suppose the law catches Hitler. What punishment can you give Hitler so that you can compensate for? He has burnt 6 million Jews alive. Can you give him any punishment? Brother. We have to put him in jail till his life death. Okay. Will it be equivalent to burning 6 million Jews? Is burning better or putting in jail better? It's burning is, of, of course. course. So maximum you can do is burn him alive. But that will be equal to 1 out of 6 million. What about the remaining 5 million? 999,999 people. What about that? What justice is your Lord going to do? But the Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 56. As to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them in the hellfire. And as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain. If Hitler killed 6 million Jews, Allah says he can put him into hellfire and give him fresh skin again. 6 million times Allah can burn him. Not here, in the year after, in the hell. So only way I can prevent Hitler from killing 6 million Jews is tell him that here you kill 6 million Jews, Allah will burn you 12 million times in the year after. You can't give him that thing here. What you realize? Without the concept of hell and heaven, you cannot prove robbing is bad. You cannot prove raping is bad. That's the reason our Creator Almighty God, who has created the human beings, He tells us what is good, what is bad for us. And He tells us the rules and regulations. This is called as religion. So first you have to find out which book is the authentic book which has been revealed by this Almighty God. And when you do research, you will come to it, that is the Quran. All the scriptures speak about Almighty God and all the scriptures they point out to the last and final revelation of the Quran and last and final messenger of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Hope that answers the question.